I really view this debt as termites in the attic, <laughs> and you know the termites are just slowly uh, eating the wood and, and destroying the uh, foundation of the home, and and that's what uh, this debt does. We've seen uh, when I first came to Washington in 1983, the national debt was just a little over a uh, trillion dollars. Today, our national debt is 14 trillion dollars, and under the Obama budget, we would add another 10 trillion dollars over the next 10 years. You just can't do that. You can't borrow your way to prosperity. And, and what this will mean is that our children will be the poorer for it. Uh, I've called uh, this deficit spending fiscal child abuse because, of course, the people who are going to pay for this debt are going to be our kids, our grandkids, and our grandkids' kids. The world, at some point, our biggest debt holder will say, enough. It's China. I mean, it's all about China because once the Chinese say, we do not have confidence in your economy, once the Chinese say, we do not want to buy more of your debt, and we do not want to buy the dollar to, to uh, accumulate dollars, that's the end of the game. Because no one other than China will be willing to finance our, our debt. So it's all about the U.S.-China relations right now. And, you know, you can buy a few more years maybe, but at a certain point, I mean, the Chinese, the, the, the head of the Chinese Central Bank just said a few weeks ago that um, China has reached its limit in terms of how much um, foreign exchange it needs. Another implication that really worries me is that as the debt gets out of control, think of what other countries like Argentina and Bolivia and Mexico and Russia and other nations that have had big debt hangovers, what do they typically do? Well, they, de they devalue their currency uh, and pay back the people who they owe money with, with, with paper money that's not worth anything. So I think we're pretty close to this point that the Chinese say, you know, no more, we don't want that. We don't want to buy your debt forever, and you know we're going to look for other investments. We're going to maybe uh, diversify our currency portfolio. We're going to buy more, I don't know, Norwegian kronas or, or Swiss francs or gold or you know. So I think that's where things uh, begin to to end when 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 we can no longer keep the party going. I think that status of the United States being number one is being put very much in jeopardy by this overspending and all of this debt. And let's face it, the debt crisis is a result not of taxes being too low, but spending just being out of control. We've been in a spending binge for the last 10 years and now we're suffering from the hangover. Now, what does this mean for the average homeowner? I think it means a couple things. One is if the debt continues to rise and rise and rise, and the Chinese and the Arabs and other countries say, you know what, we're not gonna continue to buy all of this debt that you keep issuing, then it's gonna mean um, that interest rates are going to rise and it's going to be it's more expensive to buy a house or get a college loan or to get uh, loans for whatever Americans want to borrow for. I'm not uh, one who believes in Armageddon. I think the one great thing about we as Americans is when we see things that have gone terribly wrong, we fix them. And I don't think the American people will continue to tolerate this debt. But I do think you look at a nation like China, and China is our primary economic rival today. I mean, the, the real question, uh, in my opinion, about the next 10 and 20 and 30 years is who's going to who's going to run this world? Will it be the Chinese or will it be the United States? And I sure as hell hope it's the United States that continues to lead the world in technology and innovation and job creation and wealth creation. But to do that, you, you can't do that if you owe the other nation trillions and trillions of dollars. And so this is the number one problem. Who's the leader? Who's the voice of changing the direction of our country right now. I don't see any Republican, and I certainly don't see any Democrat, talking about the need to really change the direction of our country, get spending under control. I mean, my God, can you imagine 50 or 100 years ago, uh, the government coming in and bail out car companies, bailing out banks, bailing out insurance companies, bailing out people who can't take out, you know, who made bad mortgages. We've become this huge safety net <laughs> in Washington, but there's no safety net for when the government government crashes. Well, you know, it's interesting because it's said that, you know, we're doing to ourselves what you would expect our enemies to do, to erode the uh, confidence of our currency, to take on enormous debts that we can't possibly pay back, to become debtors to our to our potential rivals, uh, countries like, you know, India and China and France and Germany and Japan. I mean, they all look at us and I think they're kind of laughing at us and they're saying, how can this country expect to be the 21st century superpower if it owes everybody money?
only reason the dollar is not collapsing now is because the dollar is uh, the prettiest, uh, the prettiest home in a very ugly neighborhood. I mean, the only thing that keeps the dollar going is that the yen and the euro are doing very badly too. I mean, that's real, the real reason the dollar is still afloat. The alternatives are just worse. So, but if uh, the European sovereign debt issue is resolved and uh, China and, and Japan goes into recovery, then the dollar will not have these um, supporting mechanisms and it will continue to slide down. I mean, because, because look, it's very simple. When you devalue your currency forever through quantitative easing, printing dollars, um, you know, um, all these shenanigans that the Fed is, is engaged in, all this expansion of the monetary base, and what happens is that you go into collapse of the currency. And at that point, also countries say, why should I buy more dollars if, if I buy the, the dollar and a year later I, I'm left with 90 cents or 80 cents? You know? so it, it, why would you want to buy something that is gradually being depreciated? Well, we've been such an enormous beneficiary of the fact that we restored the value of our currency under Ronald Reagan. We got rid of the 15% inflation. And the dollar, as Reagan used to put it, was as good as gold. And, and for 25 years, that was the case. That's the reason you could go anywhere in the world. And it, you could get into a cab in, uh, you know, in Iran, or you could get a cab in Cuba, or you can get a cab in France, and they wanted dollars, right? Because they understood that the currency retained its value and was as good as gold. We're losing that status right now, and that means some other country, maybe China, maybe there will be a you know, a European currency like the euro that will take over the dollar as the world reserve currency. That's a bad, bad sign for the United States, and I think it's, it will be one of the signals that we are an empire in decline if that happens. So I think that the only uh, thing that I can see down the road is a further decline of the dollar and then a shift either to a gold standard, back to the gold standard, or to a basket of currencies that uh, will be, the dollar will be one of them, but not the only one.